check your pulse, and turn off your phone. Get ready to be entertained. The Bronx Edulution is back, and we've got more youth voices, educational partnerships, exciting global discoveries with Alexi Gingertopoulos, dollar store science experiments with Dr. Whitey Black, and tons of ways for you to engage with us as we bring laughter and knowledge right to your doorstep. Me and the crew welcome you to season three of the Bronx Edulution. What's up, creative family? I'm Timothy Stone Dancer Coleman, your host for the Bronx Edulution, and I'm also the director of education here at BronxNet. Thank you so much for coming back and joining us for another episode of our show. We have some amazing things lined up for you. We have named this episode Opportunity for Kids in the Community. We have an interview coming up with Lael War, assistant director of a nonprofit organization that helps serve youth and adults in underprivileged communities right here in the Boogie Down Bronx. Come on, Bronx! Later, we will have a read aloud in our Uncle Tim time, and the infamous Dr. Whitey Black shows us one of his dollar store science experiments. It's hilarious. I'm the one who did it, but it's still hilarious. It's absolute chaos. So we will be right back after these messages. strong. What's up, creative family? Welcome back to the Bronx Edulution. So everybody knows uh, who's been paying attention to our show through the seasons that one of my favorite segments is when I get to introduce you to someone from the community who is doing great work on behalf of their living their purpose and being in service to others. So today we have Lael War and she is with us. Uh, she is an assistant director at Wedco, which is here in the Bronx. And I am so grateful that she even got time to step away from work and come over and chat with us today because the work she's doing is so deeply, uh, it's so deeply impactful on the children and families that she is serving in her community. I can't wait for you to meet her, so come on, let's have a conversation. Hi, Leo. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Of course. So, you know, I talked to you a little bit before yes. just about some of your experiences working in a nonprofit organization, serving your community here in the Bronx, the poorest congressional district in the United States. Yes. Lots of challenges uh, for our families. Yes. And it's like you've got to have somebody like you who has a heart of service. Yes. Where you can see the person in front of you, but also kind of spiritually hear the different touch points of things they may not even be able to vocalize yes. that they actually need, yes. right? So before we dip too far into the work, yes. I wanna let folks know a little bit about who you are as a person. Okay. So where are you from? Okay, so I am from New York, Harlem, mm -hmm. New York, oh, born and raised. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> born and raised in Harlem, New York, and been living there, of course, my entire life. Yes. Um, and I come from a very tight knit family. Yeah. Uh, we are super duper close, and it's funny because it's like my entire my mom and my dad were all based in the school. Like my mom was a teacher, my father was nice. in school. He was a school safety. So yeah. education and being with youth and children was all I knew for a long long period of time and yeah. I think it went from what I know to what I love. Oh, and I it, love that. I and, love that. Come on, just, legacy. <laughs> and it just was something that I just, I couldn't shake. And yeah. I, I knew from then, like it went from me wanting to be a teacher to me wanting to do more community-based things. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, 
yeah, that's, it brought me here today. So this, but, okay, so I also grew up in a family that was very connected to education yes. and service in the community. Yes. For you, like, how old were you when you decided, like, this is the thing? Right? Like, did you try other things first? And, and I say this because yeah. I like to show the audience teachable moments. Yes. Like, sometimes it takes us a minute to settle into the middle of our purpose. Like, did you start, where did you start out with? I know. I was th I'm, to be honest, I started at a little loss. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I didn't know too much of what I wanted to do. And I did get the opportunity to dibble and dabble into different things. And I was like, okay, let me think about, um, you know, the I was in an engineering club. Yeah, it's so yeah, funny yeah, when yeah. I was in high school and I was just like, let me see, let me just give it a try. And I was like, it's not working. Um, and then after that, like I knew I tried some sports and I knew it was, it was like, okay, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But I... I think it was when I started college was when I was like, okay, this is where my lane is when mm -hmm. I started to really dive more into the, the education field. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then that's where I was like, there's something inside of me that just can't shake this, mm. you know? And I'm not going to lie. I wanted to step away. I wanted, I was like, you know what? Something is telling me education, but then another part of me was just like, I want to explore something else. And every time I would think about something, it just wouldn't come to mind. Yeah. And I couldn't shake it. And yeah. I was like, you know what? This is, I feel like this is my purpose and this yeah. is where I need to be. Um, and alongside education, I did psych, psychology, oh, you know? Nice. Okay. Um, it focused a lot on uh, black studies and childhood psychology. And I loved it. And I was just That's like, powerful. this is this is the lane for me. Yeah. yeah. And I, I stuck with it. I think that's super powerful and I think it's uh, really uplifting is not only to the African American community but people of color of yes. any shade yes. uh, and especially our young girls who are looking for careers in STEM with the engineering they're looking for you know yes. it's okay to find yourself where you find yourself yes, right absolutely. right so talk to us a little bit about the work that you're doing on a daily basis now are you based in an office are you in a school like how does it look yes yeah, so i am in a school mm -hmm. i'm at the the highbridge green school in the bronx the highbridge part of the bronx of course um so we are we do have like our office but inside of the school so it's yeah. never a quiet day <laughs> <laughs> um right. we're super duper hands-on so like a day in a life is like organized chaos <laughs> um, but we pretty much we are there throughout the morning even though we are our after school program we are there throughout the day so mm. we do support throughout the day we do a bunch of planning which is phenomenal uh, yes and, it, and it's it's a, it's amazing because it, it's a wonderful partnership yeah. you know and it makes it seamless for the kids yes it makes yeah. it seamless the way we have our program yeah. a lot of our guidelines and a lot of just the tradition and the culture is in alignment with what they do throughout the day yeah. so it's not like a, a huge night and day yeah. um it's just a continuation with a lot of different arts that they can explore. That's right. Um, so, you know, after that daytime, we get into the, the craziness, which is, of course, <laughs> after school program where right. the kids are antsy and they're anxious and they're just like super hyper because they're just like, oh, I already went uh, eight hours yeah, and I got to yeah. have another three. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, we incorporate academics, of course, because that is a priority. That's and right. then the second portion of our um, program is the arts. And we have a plethora of arts. And that, of course, is my personal favorite. I am an education girl, so I love the books and I love the education, but it does something to my soul when I do see students participating in a, a bunch of different arts. Mm, cooking, sign language, yes, dance, yeah. because music. Because in all a those bunch. things, they're going to find themselves. They find Somewhere themselves. in there, they're going to find themselves. Absolutely. So in the few moments that we have left can yes. you tell me what is something that you have learned about yourself being in service to others oh my gosh I've learned that everyone is so unique um, and full of so much potential in their own way mm -hmm. and with the right direction with mm -hmm. the right motivation and with the right tools they can truly be who they want to be um, and I think being in the service and understanding just the background of students and the opportunities that they don't normally see on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. um, or prior to being an after-school program and just being able to see them light up when they never got a chance to explore um, something like sign language or they never got a chance to go and perform at Radio City or in Madison Square Garden. 
some of the things that we do. <laughs> um, but it's, it's just it's, to know. Just to know. <laughs> um, but it's a, it's a beautiful thing because we're unlocking potential yeah. that they never knew or never thought that they had. That's right. Um, and just giving them the opportunity to explore, like something like videography. They never thought they had an interest in cameras yeah. or video, but yeah. then they get behind the camera and they're learning just the and ins and outs. It like water. And it's just like they're absorbing and just to see them truly find something that they love yeah. to do and that they can make a, either a living off or whether they want to do it for fun or whether they want to do it to just make a, a living off of. Or whatever. Yeah. It's just them being exposed to something new and unlocking something about themselves yes. that all they needed was just a little bit of navigation and opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, look, it's the process of self-discovery. Yes. It starts, you know, at a very young age if you have programs like yours at yeah. Wedco and people like you who are literally lighting up the room with your joy of service like I could feel I'm like I want to come and check out the program like let me paint something um you know I think that also it's good for us to recognize that purpose has no age no. right there are some people that don't find it till they're 50 60 yes. 70 yes. whenever you find it it's still the right time yes and there's still a path for yes it. and I think what's rewarding too is that like yes I work with youth but I also like I work with adults too, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So like I'm in admin. So to be able to give also like young adults the opportunity to explore and to teach and have students, former students come back as a, a group leader or as a specialist and they want to actually teach kids mm -hmm. and be a part of a program that they once was, you right, know, part, right, te right. teaching a program that they once was a part of is a beautiful and rewarding That's thing. That's a powerful full circle moment. Yes. All right, folks, listen, I could speak to Leo <laughs> forever. Uh, she's super exciting. You can tell that, you know, you've got somebody who's telling you the truth because she lights up with every word. So I really appreciate that. Um, after these messages, we'll be right back with another amazing segment here at the Bronx Edge Illusion. Thank you so much. Thank you so much yes. for being with us. Thank you so much. And we'll too. be back real soon. 19.7% of Bronxites currently experience food insecurity. Meanwhile, instead of these nice colorful foods, this is the best food that they have access to. If this sounds like you, there are a bunch of resources to get healthy food for free or cheap. If you want to help, you might consider donating or volunteering in one of these places. Community fridges like this one are all over the city and allow New Yorkers to conveniently donate extra food to people who might need it. Go to this link and find your nearest one. Food banks and pop-up events like these provide millions of healthy meals to families in need. These organizations are distributing meals to Bronx sites as we speak and are always accepting donations and volunteers. Ellen Ochoa once said, don't be afraid to reach for the stars. I believe a good education can take you anywhere on earth and beyond. She echoed the sentiment of countless dreamers who refused to let fear hold them back from pursuing their aspirations. Ellen Ochoa's journey from a young girl to a groundbreaking astronaut is proof of the power of big dreams, perseverance, and education. Despite facing challenges and doubters along the way, she never lost sight of her goals, proving that with determination and dedication, the sky isn't the limit, it's just the beginning. As the first Hispanic woman to venture into space, Ellen Ochoa shattered barriers and exceeded expectations, inspiring generations of future scientists, engineers, and explorers to follow in her footsteps. Her legacy serves as a symbol of inspiration for all who dare to dream, reminding us that no dream is too big and no goal too lofty when fueled by passion, curiosity, and a thirst for knowledge. Let's pay attention to Ellen Ochoa's wisdom and embrace the boundless possibilities that lie before us. Let us dare to dream, reach for the stars, and never underestimate the transformative power of education to propel us towards our dreams, both here on Earth and beyond. And that's the juice. Get more quotes, bios, and news articles like this by signing up for The Juice. Fresh articles crafted daily by journalists and educators help you stay informed about the latest in world news, STEM, and current events. The platform combines captivating stories with innovative technology delivered to you at your reading level, ensuring you're never left feeling confused about the news again. The Juice empowers kids to enhance their reading skills through engaging articles and videos that can be enjoyed at their own pace. Sign up today and elevate your knowledge and reading abilities with The Juice.
another Dr. Whitey Black's dollar store science experiment. <laughs> Today, I have something completely out of the ordinary that we are going to try. I am not even sure if this will work, so I'm already laughing on the inside because I know that you are going to pay attention the whole time, no matter what. I love you. Okay, so now, today we are making a lava lamp, okay? A lava lamp. If you have better teeth than mine, you will be able to say L-A-V-A, -A, okay? Lava. Now, if you are not familiar with a lava lamp, well then, let me tell you this. Everyone has an uncle who has a lava lamp and those beads that hang from the ceiling that you walk through and they're like clingity, clingity, cling for no apparent reason. What do those beads do? Okay, so call your uncle, ask him for his lava lamp, okay? I am sure that he can spare it, but you must return it by Friday, okay? Don't worry, he will understand. Okay, so now in our one cup, we are going to use, this is just baking soda. I have poured it into a Ziploc bag because I ripped the box, but mom and dad, I promise it is only baking soda. Okay, so we fill a little bit of baking soda in the bottom of our mason jar from the dollar store. Okay, it only takes enough like that. All right, now we take regular white vinegar and we Pour the vinegar. I hope this works. It is not supposed to be bubbling. I did not bubble when I saw this on the YouTubes. Okay, it is creating its own thing and we are going to let that happen for a moment. Okay, over here, we are going to put our vegetable oil also from the dollar store with tax it was 109 or something okay we put it like this all right now i pick the green color okay green represents money green represents money and the green represents money okay so now we put a few drops of this king kong king 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 all right, that is how you measure food coloring. You must make the noise. Okay, so now let us stir this slightly. Okay, there we go. It looks more like, I know what this looks like. Have you ever opened an egg and put it in a bowl and left it in the back of your refrigerator? <laughs> of course not. Why would you do that? But this is what I think it would look like. Okay, so now what we are going to do, I think we need... I may have done this totally backwards. I think I've done this all backwards. Okay, oh Lord Jesus, I will be fired by tomorrow, so I hope you enjoy this experiment. We are going to now pour this into this. It's not... Okay, let us try. Let us pray, okay? We need to pray about our science experiment. This is going to occupy your children no matter what so you may as well go ahead and try it <clears throat> oh see everything is falling apart okay let us try to see can you turn down the lights okay this looks like absolutely nothing it looks like if you were to take <laughs> some ice that has not melted and then you don't use any ice cubes and then you go ahead and pour in some sort of green fizzy drink. This is what this looks like. It is an absolute unequivocal mess. This is not a lava lamp. You must call your uncle immediately and ask him to help you by bringing you a real lava lamp. Okay, is this even under my face, even at this point? Oh my God, we have so much fun in Whitey Black Science Classroom, do we not, boys and girls and mothers and fathers and dogs and cats? <laughs> Listen, you are my favorite people in the whole wide world. I tell you, if you want to retry this, what I would do differently next time, I would put the baking soda and the oil in this cup, and in the other cup, put the vinegar and the coloring, okay? And then mix them together and see what you get, cause it is science. 
How else would they have ever been able to cure a hangnail if they had not tried to first pull it off? <laughs> okay, listen, I got to go. Things are way too crazy in here, okay? Thank you so much for joining me for Dr. Whitey and Black's Dollar Store Science Experiments. Bye! The Bronx Edulution. We are Bronx Strong. What's up, creative family? I'm Timothy Stone Dancer Coleman here as your host with the Bronx Edulution, and welcome to Uncle Tim time. Now, if you saw in a couple of previous episodes, you know I did a little bit more like mentorship and coaching during Uncle Tim time because I want you guys to always be uplifted and uh, have an opportunity just to receive something positive. But today, I'm gonna be doing a read aloud for a story called The Brave Squirrel. Once upon a time, in a cozy forest, lived a little squirrel named Willow. Willow was known for his big bushy tail and his love for acorns. He spent his days gathering acorns and storing them in his tree for winter. One sunny morning, Willow noticed something unusual, the biggest, shiniest acorn that he had ever seen was stuck in the branches of a tall oak tree. Willow's eyes sparkled with excitement. He had to have that acorn. But there was a problem. The oak tree was very tall and Willow was afraid of heights. He took a deep breath and he told himself, I can do this. I am brave and I am strong. Slowly, Willow started climbing that tree. Higher and higher he went, his heart pounding out of his chest. As he climbed, he thought all about the other animals who might want that acorn too. And if I don't get it, someone else will, he said to himself. Finally, Willow reached the branch where the acorn was stuck. He stretched out his little paws and grabbed that acorn with all of his might. I did it, he cheered, holding the acorn close. Just then, Willow heard a chirping sound. He looked down and saw a baby bird stuck in the nest of tangled twigs. Hmm, the little bird was scared and couldn't get out. So, with his newfound bravery, Willow's heart filled with kindness and he knew he had to take action. I have to help, he decided. So carefully, Willow put that acorn in his mouth and he climbed down to the baby bird and he nibbled at the twigs until the bird was free. The baby bird chirp, 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 chirp. He was so happy, chirp, chirp, chirp. And he flew away into the sky. Willow felt proud. Not only had he gotten the shiny acorn, but he had also helped a friend in need. He climbed back down the tree and ran home with the acorn. And when he reached his tree, all the animals in the forest cheered him on. You're the bravest squirrel we know, they said. Willow smiled and felt warm inside. He knew that being brave wasn't just about climbing tall trees or finding the best acorns. It was about helping others when they need it most. So from that day on, Willow has been known as the brave little squirrel who helped a friend. And every time he looked at the shiny acorn, he remembered that true bravery comes from the heart. We'll be right back after these messages.
the Bronx Edulution. We are Bronx Strong. Hey, creative family, that does it for another episode of the Bronx Edulution. Thank you so much for joining us. As I really like to say to you guys, with so many things that are vying for your focus, we really do appreciate your attention. I wanna give a shout out to all of the crew and the folks that are behind the scenes that help make this show come together. It takes a lot of people to get one person in front of the camera and make a show look this fun, this engaging, and this entertainment, all on behalf of our service to the community. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, in the background for all of your support. And thank you all, audience, for watching us. We'll be back with a brand new, fresh episode next week of the Bronx Edge Peace out, everybody.